guys, welcome to the season finale, 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 finale. of Roll For It. Thank you so much. <laughs> We will be back for season four, but if you're going to miss us in the meantime, as much as we're going to miss you, join Durbin's pack. We hang out with our pack all the time on live stream. We're working on Discord. We have a bonus podcast called Pizza Time where we go more in depth into our characters, play fun little mini games and deleted scenes and inside jokes from Roll For It. It's so much fun. Just a great way for us to get to know you and for you to get to know us. And that's the whole point of Durbin's pack. Quick shout out to our newest pack members we've got. Daniel Squealer Pope, Chris the Clever, and Michael Salty Dog Mullen. If we can get to 50 patrons, then we will be able to do a season two mini series. Arak, Graham, Graham, and Zula in another in between adventure adventure. Hope you can make it. Love you. Bye. Please enjoy the episode, and we will see you on our next adventure. Make sure you stay tuned to the very, very end for a special sneak peek into the next chapter. Of Roll For It. Welcome to Roll For It. It's a DD podcast of random monsters and epic adventures. Each episode, we will roll a D100 to determine which monster we will encounter. This season, every monster is woven into a tale set at sea. Yarr! Matey. We also level up every episode, so our characters will get to test out cool new magic and abilities as we face tougher challenges. Whether you're brand new to the game or a DD veteran, Thank you for tuning in to Roll, Roll For it. it. Ladies and gentlemen, and listeners, monsters. ladies and gentlemen and monsters and beyond, welcome to the season finale of Roll For It. Can you guys introduce yourselves to the audience one last time for this season? This is Lee Royal playing Kanar, the strongest moon elf ranger you would ever encounter he's really grown up since the very beginning i'm straight up already crying <laughs> i just love you guys okay shut up hi i'm lexi i play euphoria she's a tiefling artificer she's just you know a little dark a little mysterious but you found out a lot of her mysteries so is she now <laughs> <laughs> i'm kelsey and i'm playing mo and she is learning to overcome her fear of water and to make friends and to just be a, a better cat and uh, I'm Jake. I'm the dungeon master, so I'm trying to kill these two. <laughs> I didn't specify which two. You guys get to decide amongst the three of you. Oh, God. This is this is episode 10, level 10, baby. Uh, what did you guys get when you turned to level 10? Level 10, I got another favorite terrain, and I figured since we are now in the Arctic, I'm just going to add that one in. And that makes sense because you've been here for like 10 days surviving in the cold i also got hide in plain sight basically that just means i can camouflage myself so you're like a gecko switching to geico because like <laughs> i just got another ability score point to my charisma so i am even more perfect and likable <laughs> lexi what'd you get i got magic adept which is like i'm magical with these four items all the time we magic we bop in so for this final episode we don't roll on a d100 anymore we roll on a d12 the 12 biggest baddest bosses i think the captain should roll seven <gasps> that's my favorite number it's actually my favorite number too we're meant to be best friends <laughs> <laughs> so good luck you guys as you come up across big bad evil boss number seven we can do it let's go durbin's pack Woo! Previously, on Roll For It, Euphoria, Kanar, and Captain Mo took a magic lamp from a mysterious island that teleported them hundreds of miles away. The lamp promised them three wishes if they could prove their worth and return it to its source, marked by an X in the treacherous and mostly uninhabited sea of ice. After tricking their way past the Modron Construct guards, the core group plus unit, have entered a mysterious vault carved into a frozen canyon wall. Having received the warning, none come out. Once locked inside, they heard the discouraging clatter of cannon fire from the shore. Robert Coward has finally caught up. The three of you are enclosed in a large, freezing cold room that has yet to be illuminated. A rancid smell creeps into your nostrils from ahead. The lamp in your hands, Mo, vibrates ever so slightly, and in thin blue lettering appear the three letters L U X. L U X? Lux. Lux. As soon as you say it, sconches lining the tall walls of this magnificent room light with bright yellow flame. 
A fine red rug leads ahead along the swirling marble floor into the wide open area. Small clusters of comfortable furniture sit with thick tomes stacked up on the end tables. Staircases hug the walls up to the second level balcony, the back wall of which is lined with a hundred foot high library like you've never seen before. Then of course, there's the smell. A crumpled mass in the center of the room seems to be the source. It is a withered up skeleton lying on a sick yellow and brown muck stain on the red rug. The skeleton wears fine jewelry, including a beautiful golden three-pointed crown on its head. The lamp in your hands vibrates once more and says this message. The hand of the dead lies waiting. Give the lamp to he. Mine power once restored will grant thy wishes three. It seems like that skeleton is the guy that you guys, owns the lamp. It smells lamp. so bad. I don't want to touch it. I think the best thing to do here is perhaps a perception check. I'd rather investigate. Roll for it. Yeah, 26. Mo, you step up to the corpse that gets smellier and smellier. <laughs> You see that it wears fine jewelry, uh, rings, bracelets, and red golden laced robes. It looks like the corpse of a man that has been long, long, long dead, hundreds of years. This poor guy, I say as I put the crown on my own head and put a couple rings in my pocket. Unit is wearing the king's cape. You took the blood drenched <laughs> corpse soaked robes off of this thing and are now wearing them on your body unit's, unit's wearing, wearing it. it i just have the jewelry ua finds some lipstick and offers it to mo for, for i mean you're playing dress up yeah but makeup expires ua <laughs> <laughs> i'm looking for traps i'm tracking the ground because we are in the arctic <laughs> sir <laughs> tracking will help me learn the number of any enemies that are around and how long ago anything was in this room by the thin layer of dust and everything nobody has set foot in here for at least decades and by looking at the way that the blood splotches are sort of spread across the room it looks as though whatever led to this corpse's downfall was a battle that led to the deaths of many other folk and if this is meant to be the gin, i think the fastest thing to do is to just put it in its hand but judging by the blood I think it attacks. Do I think that this thing is going to come to life and try to slaughter us all? Yes. Is that what we came here for? Kind of. Good point. All right. Prepare your weapons, your magic. I put the lamp in the rotted hand, the rotted ringless hand of this corpse. <laughs> the skeletal hand slowly curls around the lamp until it's gripping tightly. A thick purple liquid pours out of the end of the lamp like a slow faucet, creating a puddle of goo about four feet in diameter next to the corpse. How does the goo smell? Grape flavored. This is Jolly Ranchers melted. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like, like, like grape medicine flavored. You know. it's Jolly, Jolly Ranchers, Ranchers melted. melted. Yeah. Shapes stir in the goo, rising from it and collapsing like waves on the shore. What do you mean shapes? It's taking form. Yeah, something's taking form. The shapes become more solid and defined until you recognize a hand that reaches up from the puddle and grabs onto the marble floor as if lifting the rest of a body from beneath the muck. The purple liquid turns gray as it solidifies, creating the rest of the arm until eventually a figure stands up just over six feet tall. A figure that doesn't look much younger than the skeletal corpse lying at your feet much younger so it's an old person it's pretty much a skeleton with some meat sticking to it i'm prepping my bob's butcher bag i feel like it's gonna be hungry <laughs> i definitely my rapier is out yeah i'm gripping that staff yeah i'm gripping my, my bow <laughs> all right everybody's gripping <laughs> <laughs> we be gripping <laughs> it opens its eyes which are glowing red and smiles what is your which whoa both of you be very careful about what you're going to say next i wasn't expecting like this instance like right now no, I, 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 I also thought i had at least 30 minutes of an episode to figure out my wish this is what it looks like I hate it 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 <laughs> how many times the 18 times i hate it <laughs> it looks like the have you seen those really bad 
horror movies. It's like pin pinball guy. What's his Pinhead? name? Pinhead. Pinhead. He speaks again. And he says, "No rush, Euphoria." I literally just said my name, and like I feel like I'm gonna vomit. That Wait, he's just... been sitting in my pants for like three months. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm also not name. as surprised. <laughs> I know you three. So are we like friends? Yeah, are you friendly? I owe you my life. Understatement. He gestures down to the corpse and then back up to himself and says, This is me. I am Vodun Krarik. I hear his name and I instantly do a history check. 25. 25? Yeah. Thousands of years ago. Vudun Krarik was a ruler in the Feywild. He's of elvish heritage, and he was a great and terrible ruler whose people lasted forever, but whose tactics were not, you know, he's not like a nice dude. It's not somebody that everybody's heard of, but scholars or people who study great rulers. People who had a lot of time on their hands. They do recognize (laughs) the name. I am a wizard, an inventor. Much like you, Euphoria, I have seen your work. Even you, Kanar, shall promise thank you for bringing the lamp to my domain. My enemies separated it from me. Now I've been without it for a long time. Starving, but alas, I feel great. How do I look? I almost vomit. Like, <laughs> actually, like, I'm like... <clears throat> you, uh, <laughs> you you look healthy. Mo notices that he said that Yue was like him and that Kanar showed promise and did not say anything about Mo, and it made her sad. He looks at Mo and... Mo, my Crown. And he holds out a hand to you. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Freaking out because uh, she's looking at Lord Voldemort. And so she, <laughs> here's crown, here's crown. And she slides it over to him because she's going to get too close to him. And she takes all the rings off of her hands. And she <laughs> bows down on one knee and lifts her hands up to him like she's offering worship. Oh, before we wish, I was just wondering um, if maybe you saw any promise in me. No. <laughs> No. I just was, I mean, he's all wise and knowing. And I just was wondering if maybe there was any future for uh, Mo. Mo. Sir. He drags his nails across your wrist as he picks the rings up out of your hand. 50 damage. <laughs> 332 oh. damage. Actually, yeah. Um, That's a good point. What? No, it isn't. It's a bad point. <laughs> you take one cold damage you almost jerk your hand away from just the sheer coldness of his touch like dry ice and he grabs the unit by one of his arms and lifts him up and takes the robe off of him oh my <laughs> <laughs> and he steps past mo cutting her out of his eye line doesn't even really acknowledge her He walks towards large, squishy-looking spheres of a red-brown color that vegetation is growing off of. Euphoria, I can grant you your wish and many others. I believe that you and I will have a... And then picking an apple. Fruitful relationship. Instinctively, I grab Kanara's hand. I'm scared. I don't feel good. But I also feel this sense of, like, overwhelming... Something that I've never wanted to feel... Mm-hmm. coming over me at the same time. Help yourselves to the garden. Still without looking at you, Mo, he holds the apple out to you, almost like a peace offering. I take it in my hand. I don't eat it. Because I value our partnership, you way. I will be completely honest with you. I didn't intend to grant your wishes when you found my lamp. And he's almost laughing to himself as he talks. I intended to drain your souls to grant myself life. But I've grown to enjoy your company. And there are other souls. I need only three. And you 
have done a fantastic job of delivering one to me on a shiny bracelet. The evil mirth of Moonrithia will do just fine. Beautiful craftsmanship, Yue. Yue, do you know this guy? It would be simple enough, sure, to take the souls of your companions. But like I said, this is a partnership, and I see that you've grown attached. And he looks down at your hand holding Canars. What form of a partnership are you speaking of? I know the future you wish for your enemies, your good kings, murderers. I can grant them whichever death you dream of. We can do it together. And you can rise to power in your evil father's place. Yue lets go of Kanar's hand and takes a step towards Voodoo. Voodoo holds up a single finger and cocks his head to the side. Ah, I see my wards against intrusion have faded over the years. Another evil soul ripe for plundering. Your wards were no match for my wizardry. Robert Coward's voice sounds from behind you. You turn to see his invisibility fade as he approaches. Who even is that? <laughs> I'm seriously confused. Unit, go hide behind that barrel, please. This will be my third attempt at hiding. <laughs> I snuck past your, your cute little guards and passed through the mountain, as it is just a mountain after all. You guys see... His face is scarred with claw marks <laughs> and hundreds of small bites all down his neck that are far from healing. Some of them are still bleeding. Oh, He's God, missing most gross. of an ear. His robes are tattered and his armor is missing a few plates. He immediately draws his long sword and points it at the three of you, his other hand flickering with blue lightning. Yue turns around and instantly extends her staff and <laughs> I shoot a fireball. Not 20! <laughs> That's your second one today. So as I point my staff at Robert, I say, twice as hot and extra flaming crunchy. Which is true because you critted, so it's yeah. yeah, twice as hot. So with your ass damage, you've got 18 fire damage striking Robert right on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> I can't wait to do it some more. And now... You need to roll initiative. I got a three. 14. 18. Mo, it is your turn. Mo went on all fours, very much in the background, and snuck around the perimeter of the room. So by the time he's done yelling at UA, Mo is standing right next to Robert. Make a stealth check. I got a 22. And now I just want to grapple him. And you're going to be hidden from him, so I'm going to give you advantage on your grapple check. That's a 22 again. Nice. And I take both his hands, hold them behind his back, and... I take the string that usually holds my pants up and I tie his hands together behind his back. Your pants sag a little bit? I'm sagging, but I'm not like, it's not like falling off. The string belt is mostly there for when I have like 20 pounds just in my cargo pants. Cause like that lamp is not light. <laughs> like something's got to hold them up. It's a shoelace. Make a sleight of hand check to see if you can sailors knot his arms together behind. It's a 19. You Don't fuck have with been Ms. working Molly. on knots. <laughs> and you get a shoelace around this dude's hands, which are now kind of cuffed behind his back. And that puts it at Kanar's turn. I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark as my bonus. So okay. I can make sure I see him at all times. He is glowing green. Glowing uh, green, baby. And then I'm going to shoot my arrows right at his kneecaps. Go ahead and make your attack rolls for those. <laughs> I'm not missing nothing. That's a 25. <laughs> It's also 25. Come so a bunch of damage is about to hit this dude. 18. 18 from the firebolt. 18 from two arrows. Mo, well, you're right behind him. <laughs> Holy canar. Oh, warning. I cast Hunter's Mark, so that was the warning. <laughs> <laughs> canar, you still have movement if you'd like to use it. I approach. All right. With Durbin at my side. Robert is bloodied. I move towards... Robert, take out my Moe's knife and wait, you wait, you're not you're not really gonna put 
this guy in that bracelet and feed it to this demon, are you? Is I that what's happening? I don't even hear Mo right now. Go straight for this guy's heart. And I'm really strong. So when I stab this <laughs> through his heart, it's literally going to be like a... <laughs> 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 That's going to be 24. So your dagger stabs right into his chest. And then I roll out Daxter. He recognizes this son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. And bite, bite. He leaps up. With his little Daxter jetpack and bites Robert. Mo lets go of his hands and jumps back a foot and is just so surprised and taken aback by all of Yeah, this. since Mo grabbed this dude's hands, he has taken 28 damage. Which I don't think was Mo's intention. I think Mo <laughs> thought, oh, I'll restrain him. If I'm going to murder someone, it's going to be by mistake. For my movement, I pull his arms because Mo left him. <laughs> so I grab them and then Daxter moves behind me. All right, UA. Robert is going to cast Shocking Grasp on you. He's basically going to turn into a human taser for a moment. Yeah. And I rolled a two and a three. <laughs> Suspenseful. He looks at you, UA, with just the most rage in his eyes. And lightning comes out from his hand. And he just almost falls over trying to reach you. He is going to use the rest of his turn to try and wriggle out of this grip, which I'm going to contest against you. So if you can make a strength saving throw the score to beat here is a 10 21 he tries to break free and i dig my nails even further into his skin voodoo is going to approach slowly and collapse his skeletal hands that will make two souls down kill the man the bracelet will collect what i need he's using you ua He's using you for that bracelet. Kanar. <laughs> like, what? He killed Kanar's people. This guy hurt my family, destroyed a lot of my village. If someone were to come into whatever destination you call home, I don't know how angry you would be. I went home. And not that either of you asked because you're so caught up in your weird evil vengeance plot, but my whole village was destroyed. I get it. I do, but be better than him. Killing him is not going to bring our village back. Killing him can bring it back. It can bring it all back. A soul for a wish. I don't want a wish. I will rebuild my friends' bars and houses. And I'll do it in a way that's not just as terrible as the way that they came down in the first place. Then what would you have us do? Sit him down on a stool? Have him say he's sorry. Your father is guilty. Your real father. He did it. I know that he did. I can tell people that he did it. We can take him back to a jail? Mo, what do you even care? You didn't even want to be here in the first place. You kept asking us to drop you off on your island. Why are you even here? Vuldun simply raises one hand and the entrance starts to open. Some sunlight pours in from outside. You're free to go. I promised a unicorn named Ozzy <laughs> that I would start to care about some things. I'm not going anywhere. If you want to kill this guy, you may then fine. Look me in the eye and do it and tell me that that is what your king would have done. The one that you said that you want to be like. I look Mo in the eyes. I am no good king. I take my staff and use Firebolt one last time on Robert the Coward. No! As that flame is being shot, I am grabbing Robert and rolling out of the way. Okay, how are we gonna do this? I guess it's gonna be like an initiative roll here, a reaction time type of deal. Whoever's you highest know what? number wins. Straight up, roll a d20. Battle of the dice! <laughs> All right. What did you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? I got a 16. I got a 15. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Whoa. So, Kanar, this firebolt is flying through the air, and you tackle Robert. It hurts to do it as you're struck in the side with this firebolt. Ah. Oh. Kanar, no! 12 damage, and you roll towards the ground and end up with your knee on Robert's back. UA, Robert, he needs to answer for his crimes against my people. I have to take him back. For my grandma Thesty for Nabora, for those four guards, and he needs to answer for the crimes against you. We have him. We have him. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> this is drama. <laughs> this is good. 
You guys hear the heavy drag and the grinding gears of the door closing once more. And you look over and you see Vuldun with his head in his hand. Your companions are weak. And he's going to attack. You can try. Yeah! <laughs> Unit, hold on to this bastard. <laughs> Sit on him if you have to. Yeah. Yeah, literally just put Unit on top of him. Yeah. He's not going anywhere. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I will make that my task. <laughs> and then Unit cannonballs onto Robert's back. You hear a, a bit of a snap. It's definitely going to deal some damage. <laughs> Kanar, this creature, Voodoon, is going to cast Blight on you. Mm-hmm. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. That's a nat 20, boy. Are you serious? What? Serious. Yeah. Oh, That's man. what? Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like it. <laughs> a pulse <laughs> of purple necromatic energy hits you and pulls you right back up to your feet from kneeling, but you're going to fight it off with your nat 20. That's a lot of dice. 20 oh. necrotic damage. All right. But he only takes half? That is half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's already gone to man. He's ruining Voodoo's whole day. Okay? It drains you of moisture. Blood rushes from your body. What is this thing? Make an arcana check. 16. 16? Okay. Everybody's heard of the classical Dungeons and Dragons monster, the horrible, the vile, the lich. A lich is basically a wizard who, through terrifying ceremonious sacrifice, has become undead and thus immortal. It's rejuvenated every time it dies unless its phylactery is destroyed, which is like its horcrux. It backs up its life force so that if it ever dies, a new body can be formed out of the phylactery. That's a good hint. So it's a lamp. Uh, it's like a it's like a lamp hard drive. I don't know. That's a pretty bold assumption. Mo's a bold girl. <laughs> the lamp. <laughs> Mo takes her rapier, which is now a radiant weapon. You did some magic stuff to it, really without asking me. Now I'm realizing, but and you liked it and gave me a penny. <laughs> I did give you a penny. You're right. Technically, you bought it off of her. <laughs> it still has this classic gold pirate handle, but the blade is glowing red, and it looks like a lightsaber. <laughs> Stabs it into his belly, because no one touches cannot. It tears through the fabric on either side, glowing with this red light. He is within five feet of Yue. You're going to get your sneak attack damage. That's a lot of dice. Hold on. Wow, okay. You level 10 rogue. 29 damage to the lich hey, right hey, out of the gate. Hey, hey. You're welcome. That's all you, but I just made a magic. Liches are immune to non-magical attack damage. So luckily you have a magic rapier now. So I'm going to look at Kanar. You have to use magic or it's not going to work. Then back up and give me some space. 50 feet. 50 feet. Okay. So I'm going to use lightning arrow. Lightning arrow. Right at the lich's chest. 18. Just gonna be enough. Hold on to your butt. You rolling high over there? (laughs) That is 24. It's nothing. (laughs) You just had the top most. This is for all the people saying that, you know, the ranger's (laughs) the weakest. (laughs) So this lightning washes off of him and it hasn't left burns on his body at all. The lich has resistance, not immunity, to lightning damage. So I'm going to subtract a little bit of damage. Okay. From your attack. I feel really good about it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to make an attempt to shoot the lamp. Okay. The lamp is over there chilling in the dead body's hand still. That is a 24. Nice. Your arrow hits the lamp, and you see a bright violet light burst out of it. The lich turns towards the lamp and goes, <gasps> Do you get a movement? Go get that lamp. Can I send Durbin to scoop it up? Not, yeah, not as so. an attack. Sends the yeah. animal? What if it hurts him? It's a lamp. We've carried the lamp, you guys. The lamp hasn't hurt any of us. Durbin scoops it up. Okay. I'm so 
sometimes I like I just imagine that actually it's just like this donkey in a costume swooping in, <laughs> grabbing this lamp and like trotting to the other side of the room. As soon as Durbin picks up the lamp, mm -hmm. the lich is going to take one of his legendary actions. So the lich pulls out a bony finger and a ray of frost strikes Durbin in the flank for 18 cold damage. Okay, all right. How many points does Durbin have? He's at 40. Yeah, he's been leveling up alongside Damn, Beastmaster Ranger Derby. over here. Yeah. Yeah. I look at the lich and I say, you do not hurt my friends. I grab one of my manticore. Didn't call him your cat. Progress, Progress. I grab one of my mantibolts and use my Melf's acid arrow. Shoot it towards Zoom Zoom. Vroom Vroom. Voodoo. Voodoo. Zoom Zoom. It's 15. It's not gonna be enough. Yeah, on a miss, the arrow splashes the target with acid for half as much. Lame, sorry guys. Okay, so seven damage, even on a miss, this green streak of acid flows straight at it and it evades out of the way. Oh, and then Daxter is gonna take a turn. Daxter versus the Lich. <laughs> yeah, so Daxter runs up towards the Lich and... He bites him in the calf. 14, okay. Yeah. Calf for a support <laughs> character. Hey, you know what? I actually technically didn't hit him and I still got damaged. There we go. So, and I have a dog. <laughs> Daxter's gonna run towards Durbin because he's afraid. They're homies, <laughs> you know? He's just standing <laughs> under Durbin's legs. Vulun glares at you, UA, in response, and his eyes light up with this red light. Know your place, Euphoria. And is going to cast Frightening Gaze on you. Make a wisdom saving throw. Shit. He has two reactions? As a legendary creature, basically boss bosses, huh. they just keep dealing Fuck damage. This guy. Yeah. I got a two. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> Yikes. He strikes fear right Sinai. into your soul. Oh god, oh god, okay. Leave her alone. Robert Coward's up. Is he gonna try to get up because something's sitting Robert on Robert Coward's going to struggle with his hands behind his back and Unit says, I wouldn't try it. <laughs> nice. That was his whole turn? Yeah. Okay. This isn't Robert's fight anymore. Vuldun is taking lightning, taking acid. He's been bit by a little uh, corgi. corgi. <laughs> it creates this sphere of invulnerability. It's a shimmering force field. That is going to be his whole turn. Bo runs over to Durbin. Where is Durbin? Durbin's running by. He just got hit by a ray of frost, but he's got the lamp in his mouth. She takes it out of his mouth, and she gives him a little pat on the head. It says, boy, Derby. And then she throws it on the ground and takes her magic pirate saber and stabs this lamp. So 14? Plenty. Mess it up. You strike your rapier into this lamp. Purple light shoots straight up at you. The brightest thing in this room now is Moe's face being lit up. Whoa! No! The Lich reaches out to you and is going to cast one of its legendary actions, Disrupt Life. And he centers it around this lamp like an extension of himself. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw, and it's going to be a big one. What? <laughs> I hope the podcast caught Kelsey's. <laughs> Durbin is right next to you, right? And so is Daxter. Within 20 feet of the lamp, so the two of them need to also make their saving throws. Daxter might die from this. No. But he's, he comes back to yeah, life. Yeah, see ya, Derbs. <laughs> no. See you in season four. No. <laughs> Kels? Nine. Nine's not enough. Yeah. This lamp explodes. It's going to deal each of you 29 necrotic damage. Holy shit. Daxter flies straight up in the air, uh, transforming into a figurine that slams against the opposite wall <laughs> before it falls. Oh, UA's definitely cowering in the corner. Durbin is... He's down. He's, He's at zero? He, he didn't make it, yeah. So Durbin also is taken <laughs> off of his feet and falls unconscious, oh sliding into the side of the room. Mo, are you still up? Yes, I have 19. As this explosion happens, the Lich is shaken by his phylactery being destroyed. He immediately loses concentration on his globe of invulnerability. This energy sphere just <laughs> dissipates. And at the same time, this gaze of struck fear into you sort of wiped from you as you see him before the dying mm -hmm. creature that he is. And Yue is more pissed than she was before. <laughs> yeah. Because one, she probably looked like a baby earlier. She didn't like that. <laughs> I'm just going to throw myself on top of Durbin. A fellow cat. You rush to Durbin's side. You see his breathing is so faint. Mo purrs in his ear. 
Kanara's turn. This is all on you, bud. Do it for derp. Doing it for derp. I'm going to shoot one arrow while casting Hail of Thorns at level three. I straight up miss the first one. <laughs> That's okay because I have an extra attack. I got a 19. Do you want me to add? Do I need to add? <laughs> <laughs> plus a million? It, uh, it's plus 12. Holy moly. Oh, yeah. The, the things have been boosted. As the arrow strikes the lich right where his heart would be, the arrow multiplies into a hail of thorns and these magic ammunition that strike the thing into the arms and the legs and then vanish. It falls to its knees. The lich is almost destroyed. I look to my friends who are literally dying, and I scoop up my little homunculus servant minifigure and put it in my pocket and i call out words of restoration up to six creatures of my choice that i can see within range regain hit points because that's masculine words what? That's a big one. level three spell yeah. Yeah, yeah so i assume you're healing robert <laughs> <laughs> eight. So everybody heals eight? Yes, yeah, so you all heal eight. Thank you, UA. Yeah, and German too. Derby. And then I walk up to this thing, and as I walk, my thaumaturgy causes harmless tremors on the ground, yeah. but it's really epic. Like Godzilla. Yeah, and reminder, I'm in heels, so I look really good, and I'm not falling. And I look at him, do you really need a soul for a wish? And then I take out my knife, and I point it towards his neck. Would yours be enough? Look at what you've achieved. Imagine, what could you do with a throne, with an army, with a wizard at your side? You need me. Without me, you are just a demon to them. You lay. You're not just a demon. Uh, no more from you! The lich reaches out towards the two of you and a fireball erupts from right between you. Bring it. The handful of dice, it's literally a handful. It's an entire oh, no. You guys want to know something sad? What? I'm going to have to pick some of these up and re-roll them. No! Yeah. Yue, you look over and see Mo and Kanar are completely engulfed. Oh boy, okay. The scariest Jake ever is. He's such a like gentle soul and then he starts rolling damage and I'm like, you're actually a serial killer. 51 fire damage for Kanar, 25 for Mo. Oh. That was your biggest mistake! And I stab him. So your knife stabs under his chin. You see the blade in his mouth and you feel the Ooh. ice, ice cold touch of his skin. His hand comes up. He tries to grasp for the bracelet. And I rip the bracelet off and I throw it on the ground and I smash it with my heel. The soul of mirth escapes the bracelet. You hear a strange echo of a cry of pain as this breeze flows across the room and you feel this sudden lightness. <sighs> Fuck you. How to get that one out. Mirth sucked. Yeah, no, he's sucked. Vudun has enough strength for three more words as he looks up to you. None come out. I just kick him down and I step on his chest. <laughs> he falls back, just another corpse next to the one from a thousand years ago. Nice. As the smoke clears, how are you guys? Kanara's no. dead. Kanara's dead. Mo has. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you not? Hey, hey, are you zero? Hey, I'm at three. <gasps> I am not dead. No How way. Many yes, yes, way. Because she, she healed me to back to 54. And you said 51. That puts me at three. I have two. <laughs> we survived. <laughs> Hey, hey. I cannot believe that both of you guys survived I that. I told really you, you either. can try. I, with <laughs> the last bit of strength in my body, lift my arm up towards UA and make this, like, come closer child <laughs> action. <laughs> UA. I go over to Mo. Bring me his great <laughs> I pat Mo on the head and I leave her my pipe and I grab the rings and the crown and, <laughs> and I throw them towards Mo. 
I walk over to Kanar and I kneel down and I put my hand where I shot him. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. And I take out some of that flower that I had earlier and I put it to Kanar's wound. Heal him a little bit. I know you can heal yourself. Will you help me up? I try to help Kanar. Roll for it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yue, you made the right choice. We can take Robert back to Monrethia, clear your name, and then we can live however you want. And did you say we? Yeah. Even after all of this? Mo at this point is still on her back, <laughs> her pipe watching these two, feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, kiss! And you ain't cast darkness on Mo. And we lean in for a smooch. Aww. Unit applauds. <laughs> <laughs> that was exciting. You look over and you see Durbin is half seated and he's fiddling with his claw strap on his front hooves, biting at it. Then I can't speak to animals <laughs> to say, Durbin, are you okay? Durbin's fine. How is Kanar? I glance at UA. Good. Durbin slowly walks over your way and he says, Gross. <laughs> he raises up his hoof which still has a strap on it yeah and he says can Kanar take this off being a panther is stressful okay but as i'm taking it off will you keep your panther fighting spirit <laughs> just for me don't underestimate a mule i give him the bow that we started with at the beginning mm. he returns it so we have no way out of here, by the way, um, unless we can figure something out. Boosh! Cannon fire from a lot closer than it sounded before, as if somebody is pounding away at the outside of the mountain trying to get in. Boom! Robert, is that your men? Are you seriously still trying to kill us? Tears are streaming down his face. <laughs> are you okay? What? Don't talk to me! Oh. Boom! Some of the wall collapses inwards. Robert's lucky he doesn't get hit by some of this rubble. And you turn and see a 15-foot tall dude oh. named Tiptoes. Yeah! Literally holding a cannon at his side. Yeah! <laughs> With the barrel smoking. Is that you, Captain? Good job, buddy. We all walk towards Tiptoe. Did you find the treasure, Captain? Oh, Tiptoes. And then I gesture for him to bend down. And then I take the crown off my head and I put it on his head, which it looks a little silly because his head is very large. It's like an adult wearing a kid's birthday crown. Yeah, but but I give it to him. Then I go ham in this room and I start picking up jewels and this weird garden thing, which is going to feed my crew forever. It's a good idea. Inside the Lich's domain, there's thousands of books. Oh, I'm very excited. Information is valuable. If you're not going to read them, they're invaluable. There's also these solid, ornate treasure chests lining the wall. Some of them are filled with mysterious magic items. Others filled with neatly stacked platinum bars. I have Tiptoes hold out his arms, kind of like a cradle, and we just start loading him up with books. Go get the rest of the boys. We got to get all this stuff out of here before dark. I don't want to be around these creepy robots when the sun goes down. So the adventurer's mark is basically going to work as a tow service to bring a boatload back to the fire revenge, come back in for another. You guys spend the rest of the day at least loading out treasure. All right, so I'm, I'm locking Robert up into the fire revenge. I want to strip him down to just his briefs, check to see if he has any hidden items that could help him. You're going to blindfold him because some mm -hmm. spells require sight. Mm -hmm. You're going to gag him because some spells oh require verbal Mm -hmm. components i was thinking this too and you're gonna tie his hands behind his back and his fingers together so because some spells only require somatic elements mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can we give him a blanket no okay <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to remove your gag but if you utter any type of cantation i will release my arrow <laughs> how did you track us euphoria she took something from the palace I give him a jab. Robert, <gasps> be specific. The dog. She took the dog. They got the dogs tracked so they wouldn't lose them, and she took the dog. <laughs> of course she would. She didn't give a fuck. Uh, you tell her that, she's going to be like, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> Worth it. Dogs are safe on our ass. Wait. 
hold the phone. Don't we have Robert's ship now? Aren't we a fleet of three? Um, we, we sank that ship. It's okay, Tiptoe. I knew Good it was job. Tiptoe. Good job, Tiptoe. <laughs> Good job. Robert Coward's ship, the Tidebringer, showed up with his undead crew and was taken out by the pirates. Like, you guys had a bigger squad than him. He let his path for vengeance cloud his usual strategic nature and basically went on a suicide mission. All right, it's getting dark, everybody. Back aboard. We're going to Monrethia. We have some stuff we have to take care of. Hi, Captain. Hi, Captain. Knock, come here. I can't be on both ships at once, so I'm going to need a co-pilot. And I'm wondering if you would very carefully and responsibly and not impulsively, would you like to be the captain of the Adventurer's Mark as part of the Fiery Revenge fleet? I, Captain. I think I'm standing in the middle of you two, and I put my arms around both of you, and I go, I think we really got the greatest treasure, friendship. I'm just kidding. Oh we God, all got so injury. much gold. We got so <laughs> much gold. All right, get on the boat. Both of you on the boat. Weeks <laughs> later, picture a Caribbean-esque shore, stone cliffside, white sands approaching on the horizon. Two ships with unmarked colors. What, what colors are you guys flying? We're both flying red and white striped shirts. <laughs> 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 Two ships flying red and white striped t-shirts approach the beach. Uh, one of which doing like, you know, like a motorcycle slide as it hits. Sounds about right. Some gold and jewels spill over the top of the rail. So the tabaxi people of this village, especially the kids, have gathered on the shore. Isn't that Molly Big Head? Mo is standing very dramatically, Captain Morgan style, with one leg up on the bow. And on you the hear bow of the ship. That's Molly. Frimpil's right next to me. You coming? I'll be with the ship. And then I jump off. And Kanar and UA have stepped off as well, and these kids, they're pushing to try and get the most detailed possible look at everybody. Wow, are those Where'd horns? you get that scar? And then you just hear like a collective gasp and you turn and see that Tiptoes has stood up and is now towering 15 foot over the deck. A female tabaxi has reached the front of the crowd as she's heard the shouts and she's got tears in her eyes. Molly. Hey, mom. Mm. What, what took you so long? Kind of a long story. Tell us, Mo, tell us. It was a foggy morning at sea and I woke up and I was hungover, and I didn't know where I was. It was a really, like, strange ship, and there was an old guy looking at me. Actually, it's that old guy right there. You see him with the beard? He said, Captain? Kanara, how are you feeling at the end of season three of Roll For It? Oh, boy. He feels accomplished. Uh, I feel that I ultimately did get, you know, that life that I wanted of adventure being on the sea and exploring and i'm really excited to go back to Sida to kind of live up to what grandma Desti wanted me to be yeah mm -hmm. and he's happy to have start a relationship with uh ua Cute. yeah how many kids are you guys gonna have <laughs> i cannot wait to go see your sister <laughs> yeah mo how are you feeling mo had like a very wholesome story she finally has her confidence. Like, I think she's had imposter syndrome for a really, really long time. Holding up at home and having something to show for herself finally made her believe in who she was. She, I guess, grew up. I guess that's what it is. Like, getting confidence in yourself, finding your people, and establishing home is just, it was just a coming of age story for Mel. Seriously, like, I was crying almost. I was like, oh, God, shut up. Okay. <laughs> it was so sweet with the little kids too added. Oh. UA, how you feeling? Yeah, no, I think a weight's definitely lifted off UA's shoulder by not carrying a soul anymore. She made a choice, which she, she's been battling this entire season of like going from one to the other, or from one to the other, and then she finally s gonna stay with one. And she's excited to be with Kanar. Like this is something completely new and it's like uncharted territory. And then going to see everyone's families is kind of, it's exciting, but it's also kind of sad. But she's with her family while she's doing it, so it's good. 
hey, you people listening to our show, I just want to say real quick. Uh, Thank you're, you. You're a cool person. Guys. I appreciate you. I hope you loved it. Tell us what you Don't thought. Don't be strangers. Check out our Patreon. Check out our YouTube. And, um, okay, bye. Roll for it. Roll, Roll for, for it. it. <laughs> and cut. UA, you're having a tough time sleeping, so you're just sifting through papers and tomes that you've recovered from the lich. You skim through tome after tome until eventually a scroll falls out from behind a stack and catches your eye. Your heart suddenly races with anticipation as you realize that you are looking at a spell scroll of true resurrection. Oh shit. You're suddenly struck with a vision of the good king and he reaches a hand out as if to take yours. I'm proud of you, Yue. You go to take his hand but you can't move your feet and you look down and you see a hole opening up beneath you and a long clawed sharp purple hand grabs you around your ankle I'm so proud of you Yue and pulls you into this dark hole oh shit <laughs>